Greetings and peace. My name is Ram Hotep. Coming back at you with another segment on behalf of 13signsastrology.com. I thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. See me sitting here playing with my organite. These are my organite pyramids. And I, I like to put them together so I can have the whole 720. And uh, pretty much this organite is real good. Well, first of all, it has gold in it. Gold resin, copper, silver. There's crystals inside of here. And this organite was made by a female. Um, she's in the metaphysical community out here where I'm at. She makes the organite. And uh, I like to get all my organite from her or whatever. And I use this for radiation. Um, it helps to protect us from like a lot of the uh, rays, these false, these rays that are coming from uh, lower frequencies and lower vibrations, and they affect our aura, and they can cause a lot of dark energy to mix itself up in our aura. And when a lot of dark energy gets mixed up into our aura, that's what causes us to become depressed. That's what causes us to feel blocked. That's what causes us to not be able to manifest as easy is because of the dark energy that locks itself into our aura and it affects the molecules in our brain even like even watching television that emits radiation and it messes with your aura so that's why you gotta like protect yourself I mean some people it's their job to sit in front of their computer so you need some protection and that's why I use these organized pyramids for my protection and for those people that are in cities, of course, because people are going to email me anyway, so I might as well say it. For those people that are in cities that can't get these pyramids, um, I do privately sell them. You can send me an email. I don't sell them on the website, but I do privately sell them um, kind of like as gifts or whatever. But and I'll ship them to you. Uh, basically, you just give the sister a donation, and I'll work out the deal for you so you can get these organized pyramids or whatever. So if you're interested in that, email me at 13signsastrology at gmail.com. So on this particular episode, it's not about Organite, <laughs> just wanted to kind of bring that up. I want to help people, I want to paint a picture, and I want to help people to understand their star heritage from a better perspective. Now most of the time when you guys hear me talk about star seeds and star heritage, you start to hear me mix up a lot of extraterrestrial information in with that. And I did that last year for a reason because I was trying to help people to make the shift and help people to understand the different groups and the different alien races and things like that that are out there. But on this particular segment, I want to talk about star heritage from more of a human perspective and from more of a astrological and astronomical scientific perspective. Now, most like when I talk about star seeds, my perspective on it is, is that all humans are star seeds. Your soul is basically formed of light. And your soul is connected to a star constellation or maybe even more than one, depending on your, your natal chart and how it's set up. Or maybe even more than one star constellation. Soul means light. Even in Spanish, soul means sun. So when you talk about soul, having a soul, that's of course a light. Many of you have heard me talk about that. Energy. Scientists have even discovered this, that they've measured it to a point to where souls have wattage. So it's a certain amount of energy that's inside of your heart. Your soul is in your heart. So when you talk about your sun sign, that's your soul. So that's why like when a lot of people... Uh, they may read their sun sign and don't 100% resonate with it because it's only talking about your soul, the inner you, the origins of you. And a lot of times people don't never really get a chance to discover the inside or the inner part of themselves like that. And then a lot of times people on the outside never discover your soul or the inner aspect of you because they only see the mask that you wear, which is actually your ascendant. But you want to, to really understand star seeds and star heritage, you have to first acknowledge that you are a soul. 
that's what you are. You are a soul. You are not a physical body. And I know that's so hard to believe because, you know, like you can touch the physical body and you can feel the physical body, but you are light. You are light being and matter. And the only reason why we are particles instead of waves, because we used to be waves as beings. And the only reason why you're a particle now is because you made the decision or we made the decision as a group of humans to manifest this reality as particles. And what do I mean by that? We manifest this reality as separate. That's what's called the separate self when you study Hinduism. Because we manifest as the separate self because we decided to acknowledge this reality. And this was collectively. We did this in the past and it's in our DNA now. So we decided to look at this reality from a separate point of view, from an individual, individe you all, individe you all. <laughs> because to divide one, you have to do it from within first. To separate somebody from somebody else, you do it from within. You have to mentally disconnect that person from the next person. And that's what we did, that's what we decided to do. So now we see this reality in particles instead of waves. Now was a time when we manifested more as waves or as a frequency, whereas almost like to a point where we were beamed into this reality. See, we were beamed in at one point because we didn't want to get caught up into the karma and get trapped here. So we never really let ourselves become separate, like particles, until the fall. So when you hear about the fall of man, truly the fall of man is deeper than Adam and Eve, leaving the garden, eating, and all of that. That's talking about on a metaphysical level now, when man separated from the all and became an individual. So to understand star seed, star heritage, you have to begin to see yourself as that light again, as that soul again. And though you're still trapped in this body, you still can, you still have your light body. When you dream, when you meditate, and when you see yourself in your meditation or in your dream, you always see yourself in, in your body or in a body, usually a human body. And I asked one of my clients or one of my students the question, how come you don't see yourself as a unicorn, as a dolphin, as a penguin, as a bat? Why do you see yourself as a human for the most part when you dream? And I know we do have times when we see ourselves or see ourselves, excuse me, as a bat or a dolphin, or some type of other entity outside of the human. We do have times when we see that, so I'm not saying that's always the norm, but for the most part, even when you dream, you see yourself as a human. Why is that? That's because in your dreams, the light that you see, the visions that you see, are just as real as this reality, when you see people in this reality. Just like this reality is just as much of a dream as the dream world because the separation or the, the line that really separates dream from reality is consciousness what you decide that you want to see and manifest so what I'm saying is, is that to understand star heritage you must first see yourself as a soul and some souls have been on this planet longer than other souls some souls have been on this planet going through cycles of reincarnation trying to work out a certain life or certain situation that they got themselves in from deciding to become an individual. So you got yourself locked into the cycles of reincarnation because you decided to become an individual. And in that, you now have to work out your karma, the karma that you created for yourself. You have to now work that out. Over It doesn't really matter how many lifetimes it takes because there is no time. Time never was. So there is no time when you deal with working out karma. It's just basically you get put back into a certain situation and you got to redo it again. So you get put back into another body and you got to redo it again because you have to remember what are you really redoing? What is karma? Basically the karma is the situations that come in your life that help you to remember why you are here. And once you remember why you are here, then you have to remember how to free yourself. The only way to remember how to free yourself is to remember how you got trapped here in the first place. See, when you first came here as a wave, as a wave, you were on a mission for the all. You were doing research. You were here to experience. 
But some of us, and this is all of us here listening to this because we're all disconnected in bodies now. Some of us decided we loved it so much that we wanted to disconnect from the all and and basically do our own will and keep experiencing this reality. So we supposedly disconnected ourselves from the all and began to experience reality. And in that, we created certain situations for ourselves. We created karma because karma is created. Karma means to make. Many people have heard heard me say that. And, you know, you can research it. Karma means to make. So we made the situation for ourselves. So anything that's made can be unmade. So really what you're doing in this reality is, is you're unmaking the reality that you created for yourself by going through the karma. So you're going through hell to get to heaven, to your star heritage, to get back home to the stars. Now I'm going to help people to understand what star constellations potentially humans are from. And this is based on my research. I'm not saying this is the gospel, but this is based on what I've studied. And humans are connected to a handful of star constellations. And the reason for that is because of interaction. Karma, basically. Uh, when we were as when we were different beings and we came and visited this planet, we came from different star constellations. And we met and engaged with beings here and basically created karma. Because anytime you engage a being, see that's why some beings they won't get involved. They'll watch humans but they won't get involved because they know if they get involved they've engaged and they created karma because every time you meet someone you're creating karma for yourself and then now you have to go and figure out and remember why you met them so that you can free yourself from that particular person and the karma that you guys created together so when we were visiting here we created a lot of karma for ourselves by engaging beings here so you want to be able to what a person wants to be able to do is you want to be able to figure out which star constellation you came from and that'll tell you a lot about your karma here or your mission here and that's what I'm going to get into right now now some of us uh, came and our souls are younger a little bit younger and some of our souls go back to Orion then we have many of our souls that go back to Pleiades and then you have another group, an elder group, and these souls go back to Ceres. I'm going to help you let, paint a picture, and help you to really understand how these different, the nature of these different groups. Now the beings from Orion are, have a very dark nature. The beings from Orion are very interesting very very interesting. Um, to really understand Orion you have to study ancient Egypt and the pyramid text. And in the pyramid text they talk about Sehu. Sehu. And Sehu is Orion. Sehu is Orion. And Sehu had a consort by the name of Sokjet. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Or Sakis, the Greek name. And because the uh, Egyptian name is kind of slipping my mind, I believe it's Sakjet, but I mean, somebody will correct me in the notes. But I know it's Sakis, Egyptian name. And you hear about Osiris and Isis and all of that, and most people say Osiris is really serious. But in the pyramid texts, which are a little, they're a little bit deeper, and a little bit older, they say that Sehu created all the gods. Sehu and his consort, of course, with the help of his consort, Sehu and Sapjet or Sathis created all the gods. And I'm bringing this up because the Egyptians, their deities were really coded star constellations. And I'm going to start talking a lot about this. Even when you get down into like Ta, and, uh, Isis, uh, Nefertim, and the list goes on. These are different star constellations, but I'm focusing right now on Orion and Sehu. Now, Sehu represents Orion, according to the ancient Egyptians. And that's important because the ancient Egyptians, if you notice, they built a lot of their structures around Orion. 
and they built a lot of their structures in alignment with Ceres. They did a lot of their rituals, actually, with the rising, excuse me, of Ceres. A lot of their rituals were centered around that. And why? Why did they do all this? This is because they knew that this was their star heritage, and this is where they came from. So I'm bringing this up because you can easily research your star heritage a lot of different ways. You can do it through your DNA, if that's what you choose to do, or you can do it through your natal chart. But I like to do it through the natal chart because a lot of people, uh, it's a couple reasons why I don't like using DNA. For one thing, DNA is not 100%. Just because you're born in a particular DNA structure in this life does not necessarily mean that that was a particular DNA blueprint you had in another life. So I really don't like using DNA to really trace people back to their star heritage. But some people do. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people will say, well, if you're uh, so-called black or, you know, uh, or if you're a Nubian, you know what I'm saying, or more, then you your heritage will go back to Sirius. You know what I'm saying? That's what most people will say. Or, you know what I'm saying, a lot of people will say, well, if you're uh, so-called Caucasian or European, a lot of people would like to say that your heritage will go back to the Pleiades. But that's not always the case because you could have been a different race in a different life because of the fact that you may have engaged with other races and other lives so now you created karma for yourself to where now you you experience life in more than one race or more than one body. And it wasn't always the case. That wasn't always the case. See, at one time, uh, we would only reincarnate back to our family line. But the thing is that we started to mix on this planet. So now... That every time you mix, I already explained this, you create karma. Every time you engage, you create karma. So the fact that we, since we started mixing, that created karma. So now we have different beings that experience, spent one lifetime as a, as a Hindu. They spent another lifetime as a Ethiopian. They spent another lifetime as a, uh, a European of some sort, or Russian. They spent another lifetime as an American. So they may have spent different lifetimes in different places because they, we engaged as humans. So I'm saying I'd have to say that you can't really do it through just DNA. Like you can't really trace back one star here just by just looking at the DNA. So I like to look at the natal chart. I like to look at the natal chart. And that's what the Egyptians were doing anyway. I mean if they were aligning their structures with the stars, they were practicing astrology anyway. Um, they may not have revealed the personal aspect of astrology where they were revealing natal charts because only kings could get natal charts. So you would have to be a king to know your actual star heritage in ancient Egypt, you would have to have been a king at that time. But now we're in a different time so we can reveal to people their star heritage so they would know. So I'm saying I'll get to say this. Most people either come from Orion, Sehu, Sirius, or Pleiades. And there's other constellations. I realize there's 88 star constellations, star constellations out there, but these particular stars link to our solar system and influence our sun. So that's why we have a link to them. Now, a lot of the younger souls, going back to my point, are either from uh, Pleiades. I think I said Orion, but I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. A lot of the younger souls are usually from Pleiades. And it's a reason for that. Pleiades, our sun is actually the eighth star in Pleiades. Our sun is the eighth star in Pleiades. So the Pleiadians always have been coming here. And they've been engaging us as far as the human aspect as far as like the Pleiadians coming to this planet because you have humans let me rewind here you have humanoid type of Pleiadians you heard me talk about that and this is based on evolution the Pleiades have an earth type of planet in Pleiades it's an earth type of planet there it's just like the earth and human type of life can evolve there except it's more fifth dimensional so you had a lot of Pleiadians that have been coming to this planet more recently so they're younger souls. They've been coming back and forth to this planet a lot more recently. And that's for a lot of reasons. One reason is because it was closer. And another reason was because they were actually a part of the quarantine or whatever. Which means that, I know I'm going into a lot here, but the quarantine was kind of like a shield that blocked certain groups from being able to come here. But the Pleiadians were able to infiltrate that because before the quarantine was set, they had already had karma wrapped up in with humans. So the Pleiadians, the Pleiadians are more scientific. They're like, basically, they're like humans except on a different level. They're like pretty much where we will be 2,000 years from now. 
those are your Pleiadians. So they have very much a link to science. These are your scientists. So if a person wanted to know, like, okay, does my soul come back, uh, originate from Pleiades, one of the things you want to look at is your nature. Because the Pleiades link to Aquarius. Aquarians are very scientific. There's several different constellations that link to different bigger constellations. What I mean by that is there's several different constellations that are in the ecliptic, like the 13 constellations that we all know about. Those particular constellations link to either Pleiades, Sirius, or uh, Orion. And that's how I like to kind of teach people. So the Aquarian side, or that side of the zodiac, Aquarius, Capricorn, Pisces, is tied into the Pleiadians, tied into Pleiadian energy. And there's, there's a big reason for it, even going into Taurus. I mean, it's a lot of signs that are linked into the Pleiadian energy. So these are your scientists that came to the planet. Um, researchers, you know what I'm saying, intellects. They rely on their intellect. Then you have uh, the Orion group. The Orion group, and that's what I was talking about before. So let me go back to this, this Orion group. Now the Orion group are very dark. They became your dark ones. And the Orion group is interesting because the Orion group is actually, uh, we all have the Orion group in our blood starters. The Orion group is kind of like a melting pot for like star seeds. Um, a lot of different beings move to Orion. Some of the Pleiadians live there. Some of the ex Pleiadians live there. Some of the ex Syrians live there. So a lot of different intelligence and a lot of different entities live in the Orion group. And the thing about the Orion group is they are masters of power. So beings that wanted power, they move to the Orion group and they deal with the Orion group. So a lot of the students of the order of Amun Ray, Amun Ray, A M U N, a lot of the students of Amun Ray are a part of this Orion group because the students of Amun Ray were masters of dark magic, black magic, as well as light magic, and they believed in control. They were all about control. So. I'm not talking about aliens here, but a lot of the reptilian type of people, not aliens, but of people that have reptilian type of thinking, like control and, you know, and structure and all of that, that comes from the Orion group. So that's why, like a lot of the uh, people that are in sports, and politicians and things like that have a lot of links with the Orion group, have a lot of their DNA, a lot of it, or their star DNA, or their, uh, their light code, I should say, links to Orion because of the power thing. And then you have the Syrians. And this is an interesting group as well. Um, the Syrians get here via Nibiru. So the Syrians really, they're interesting or whatever. I mean, they have a connection with us, but they're only custodians. And they're only guardians. And the Syrians are like the fathers or the mothers, you could say that too, the fathers and the mothers of the whole the whole 18th and 19th galaxy or our solar system which is in the 18th galaxy and the 19th galaxy. So they basically control the whole thing. So they control like the Pleiadians, Andromedans, and the Orion group. But the thing is, is that it's not a control to where they tell them what to do. They only basically keep the system of checks and balances to make sure that universal law is being upheld at all times. So the Syrians are like, they practice selfless love, but at the same time though, they're detached. So they don't necessarily really have a link with humans. And they'll, you know, use humans to their own ends if they have to, because you have to remember the Syrians, they're the fathers of the galactic order. That's basically what I'm saying. They're the fathers of the galactic order. So they don't too much care about humans because humans have not been initiated into the Galactic Federation as of yet. You know what I'm saying? As of yet, that's happening now. But So when I'm saying humans, I know I wasn't really talking about aliens, but I'm saying humans in this stage of evolution. So I'm talking about humans here on this planet. you got to remember now, there's humans on Sirius. There's humans in Pleiades. There's humans in Orion. That doesn't mean they're on the same evolutionary stage or in the same dimension as us. They don't. They may look like you, but they may not function like you. 
See, we only function off of nine to ten percent of our brain. So yeah, we're humans and we got the body, but we don't really know how to use the body. You know what I'm saying? Like we still talk. These particular humans are serious. They have no need to communicate that way. You know what I'm saying? So that I mean they, they can communicate telepathically. So they may look like you, but their frequency is not the same. You may not really be able as a human to interact with them because they don't really get involved with humans. So you may not really be, be able to even touch them unless they took you into another realm, into their realm, where they're not karmically responsible, and then they interact with you. So they're the custodians, or the people that basically, or the beings that look out for the whole. So in order for you to really know what star group you came from, just look at the natures of what I just described. The natures of the different beings that come from different star groups. And remember, these beings can manifest as intelligence, or as physical bodies. So when you hear me explaining a lot of stuff about these particular beings from star groups, from different star constellations, you have to remember that they can manifest as intelligence. It's not always like they have a body. You know what I'm saying? See, we get caught up on this body thing, and that's why I started out telling you about particles versus waves. See, they deal with thought. See, they, they know that. On the fifth dimensional level, it's all about thought. So all of these particular beings know that. So they're on different levels of thought course and being able to manifest through thought because you have to graduate but yet still these beings are past the separate thing that humans are caught up with so that should really like help people I really want to try to help people because I'm teaching my classes again and stuff like that and I really want to help people to understand what I mean about star heritage and star groups and stuff like that like for instance like a lot of your like let me get into the indigos and the flower children and the crystals to help you understand it even better now you're Let's start with your flower children. Your flower children, majority of all of them come from Pleiades, that, like the flower children. And the flower children are, they started being birthed around the 60s up through the 70s. These are your flower children, all the way up until close to the uh, late 70s. And then that's when the indigo started coming. So the flower children are all strictly linked into Pleiades. And they are, these are the beings of love, the hippies and the you know what I'm saying? They did the psychedelic drugs and they created a lot, like Steve Jobs. I mean, they said, I'm not trying to vilify his name, you know what I'm saying? I definitely want to send a shout out to Steve Jobs, um, but I heard, you know, that he at one point used LSD or something like that. And I know when you use certain drugs, it unlocks aspects of your brain and helps you to create from another dimension. So they were using those drugs and connected with the Pleiadians at that particular time through those psychedelic drugs. So that, those are your flower children. They were all in love with life, and that's why they're called flower children, because they love. They were all about love. You know what I'm saying? You had Bob Marley and all of them. They were out of that group. And then you had the indigos. Now, the indigos come from a mixture of the Orion group. Some of them are, some of them are from Pleiadians, the Pleiadians, but they're more... See, the indigos are more ancient Pleiadians, though. So when you talk about the Pleiadians, the indigos that are from Pleiades, these particular, they were of a different class of Pleiades. It's just like in America, you got the civilians, right? And then you got like the military class or the officers. Well, the Pleiadians, I mean, I'm sorry, the indigos were more like the military class or the officers. They were more like the elite. You know what I'm saying? Warriors, radical, but kind of like not the human class and not the civilian class. So more didn't really have more of a sense of I mean the indigos care but the indigos are more warriors so it's more about the political interests you know so that's why indigos are so radical and ready to go to war because it, it comes down to the political interests with the indigos or whatever so they're linked to as far as the indigos that are linked to Pleiades they're linked to that particular class of Pleiades because there's different classes just like there's different classes of humans and uh, yeah there's there's classism in the stars y'all <laughs> I mean, just because it's, you know, like some star kind, don't think there's not ranks. There's ranks and degrees and everything we do in the universe. And then the other indigos, um, some of them join the Orion group, of course. You know, I'm saying that this is in their DNA blueprint. It's up to you as an indigo to decide, okay, how far back do I go? Well, you have to go back and meditate and tap into your Akashic records to figure that out. The only thing I can do is offer you the information. I just put out information, and then you have to decode it, figure out what to take from it and what to leave. Because when I teach, as a teacher, I have to teach on many levels to many people. I have to teach to politicians. I have to teach to common people. I have to teach to drug dealers. I have to teach to people that are prostitutes, believe it or not, watching my videos. Um, and they get stuff from it or whatever. So I mean, I'm, teaching, I'm teaching Christians, to uh, Jews, 
to Muslims alike. So teach them on different levels. So just take what's for you. Now some indigos, um, the ones from Orion, they join the Orion group and you know they got initiated into the Order of Emerald Ray and they're about power and all of that. Of course, that's in some of the indigos' DNA. And you got some indigos that do go back as far as Sirius. And they do go back that far. So it's pretty interesting when you like check out indigos. Now most of your crystal children, like straight up and down, your crystal children are all like they're they're all like going back to like Sirius, some of them, and then the rest of them are Pleiades. And the interesting thing about the crystal children is they don't have a lot of that Orion stuff in their DNA or in their star heritage, and that's the good thing. Because you heard me kind of talk about, and I know I've been bouncing around here, but that's my teacher's style. I know you guys have figured that out by now. <laughs> just just uh, take notes. Cause I don't. I just get on the video and just teach from what I have been taught, so and, and what I'm channeling. So, um, as far as this, th these uh, crystals, they're interesting because they don't have a lot of that Orion stuff in their DNA, like that power and control. And I, I do a lot of readings and consultations with them, and these are good nature. I mean, for the most part, you know what I'm saying, unless they've been corrupted, but their nature is not as power thirsty and control thirsty. Now, there's different phases of crystals, just like there's different phases of indigos, but what I'm saying here is that most of the crystals are more so linked to either Sirius, they're more custodians, which links them to Sirius, or they're more scientists, which will link them more to the Pleiadians. And going back into Atlantis, because the Pleiadians had a lot of influence over Atlantis. The Syrians uh, did, the ones that came on the Biru and came here, they had a lot of influence over Atlantis too, but remember Nibiru goes in and out of our solar system, so Nibiru isn't as connected to us as the Pleiadians are. So the Pleiadians had a big influence over um, Atlantis or whatever, so we start talking about the Pleiadians. So, uh, again, you have the Syrians who are the custodians, the Pleiadians are the scientists, and then you have the uh, Orion group who are power, by power and control. And like I said, all of us, majority of us have that in our heritage or whatever because of the fact that if we've been visiting this planet, we've been messing around with power and getting initiated into certain groups so that we can gain power for so long that that's in our DNA because we've been doing that for so long or whatever. So, And with that comes karma. So most of us have that in our blueprint. It's just there. Like, So, I mean, the, the reptilian thing, when we start talking about their nature and all of that, well, like from a human perspective, since I'm teaching on, you know, human rights and things like that. Basically, what I'm saying here is that <clears throat> we have to get that out of us. We have to get all that junk. Like, we want to exist and, in, 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 I guess, get and be initiates in the Galactic Federation of Light. Or just the Galactic Federation, because I don't really like to say of light, because there's two different ones. But if we want to get initiated into the Galactic Federation, we have to get a lot of that junk out of our soul, out of our light, out of our aura, out of our DNA. You know what I'm saying? In order that reptilian control aspect, you know what I'm saying? It has to definitely has to go because, I mean, when the uh, elders get back or the custodians, which is those beings that are on the bureau, see, the bureau hasn't came yet. The bureau is going to be here, you know, maybe in another 30, 40 years or whatever. So we're going back in between the third or fourth dimension right now. So we have to be all the way in the fourth dimension before the the, uh, the bureauans come back. So they're sending scouts, but they're not back yet. So when they come back, they're going to get rid rid the planet of this whole reptilian thing. And they're going to initiate, finally initiate this planet into the uh, Galactic Federation. And with that, all the beings on the planet have to be initiated, the beings that are going to make it. So that's what this shift is about. It's going to last, you know, about 10 years or whatever, 10 to 15 years of going from the third and fourth dimension. That's why we're shifting. We're going to the third, to the fourth, going to the third, to the fourth, until eventually, because we're on the line right now, on the, uh, the line between the third and fourth dimensions. Eventually, we're going to get deep into the fourth dimension. And that's when the uh, Syrians are going to come back. And that's when this plan is going to be rid of a lot of this reptilian junk that's in our DNA. So, I'm just saying all that to say, like, time, definitely time to cleanse. Definitely time to start eating right. Things like that. So that when the uh, custodians come back, they, they're going to judge us based off universal law. How we treat each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, it really, people think universal law is all about... Uh, you got to go around kissing and hugging everybody and all that type of stuff. It's not like that, guys. It's just more like about infringing on people's free will. That's what we really fuck up at all the time is, excuse my language, we, we really mess up when we infringe on people's free will. Like, we, we infringe on people's, like, 
I have this statement that says, your liberty ends where my freedom begins. So, basically saying all that to say that you can't infringe on people's rights. That's where we mess up with universal law at. You can't infringe on people's rights, guys. So, that's really most of it, is like when humans start getting out of this control and other humans thing. And, and I know it's hard because, I mean, some humans feel like other humans aren't really as responsible, so they feel like the only way to really, con to really make them responsible is to control them. And I understand that, but I'm saying over time it's going to have to get to a point where people are held accountable for themselves. And basically, it's like if that person not being responsible, that's on them or whatever, but for you to go and try to control them to be what you want them to be, it's past the point we have to let people grow and things like that. But that's going to come over time. And I'm saying all that to say eventually we're going to get out of that Orion thinking as far as power and control and manipulating other people to, to gain and all of that. And we're going to graduate and basically all become one so that we can engage and go to higher dimensions. See, we can't go to a fifth dimension like this. People say, oh, I'm in the fifth dimension. If you're in the fifth dimension, then are you being controlled or are you controlling people? On, on, on any level, ask yourself that. If you're really truly in the fifth dimension, how did you get there controlling people? Because you can't get there and you still got control issues. And I'm talking to myself too, so I'm, it's not about like judging people, it's not about religion or anything like that, it's just facts of this is how universal law works. You can't infringe on people's rights. So It's one of the main ones or whatever. So. Uh, I hope that really helped. I didn't mean for this video to be this long um, on star heritage, but I just want to really help people to really understand like the nature of these different constellations and where you could have came from. And uh, Like I said, I'm going to be in my classes taking my students deeper into helping them to decode exactly how to know based on looking at a natal chart where someone could potentially come from as far as you know their different configurations in their chart or whatever I have methods and how I do these things but this particular segment was just to let people know the nature of these different intelligences and these different star constellations and how they resonate with us and how they've been influencing our evolution for a long time so I hope you guys learned something from this particular segment I'm going to go ahead and get out of here got some work to do uh, thank you guys for listening and watching, and until we meet again, I'll leave you in. Namaste.